Whether it's Tesla, SpaceX, Twitter, Neuralink, The Boring Company or Starlink, Elon Musk is everywhere. Almost all these companies are highly successful in their respective fields, but the same cannot be said for Starlink anymore. Often referred to as the future of internet worldwide, Starlink is getting weaker by the day due to its limited capacity and decreased speed. Stay with us till the end as we tell you what is going on with Starlink and whether it can still be our best hope to connect the globe together. Before we tell you what is wrong with it, you need to understand how it actually works. When it started, Starlink guaranteed unrivaled worldwide coverage, lightning fast speeds and low latency connections. The company stated that the goal of Starlink is to deliver internet access to even the most remote areas of the planet. Starlink promised to be there for everyone, with lightning speed, whether they're in the heart of the Sahara Desert or downtown New York. Starlink uses a network of satellites in low Earth orbit to get the signal to you. These are not geosynchronous or geostationary satellites, which are fixed in place above the Earth like DISH or DirecTV birds. The Starlink DISH for residential clients is designed in a way that it is able to realign itself automatically in order to pick up a new satellite. Furthermore, Starlink has a significant advantage over DirecTV in that it significantly minimizes the signal delay or latency by utilizing low Earth orbit satellites, which are located approximately 340 miles above the Earth. According to its website, Starlink is accessible in the majority of the US, although there is still quite a few places where it cannot be used owing to capacity issues. Starlink's web coverage map service indicates that it is only present in sections of North America, Europe, most of Australia, Chile and Brazil. However, there are numerous additional nations where Starlink won't be accessible for many coming years. These include the entirety of Asia and the Middle East, South America, Africa, much of Scandinavia, Canada and more. Starlink does intend to provide services in these nations, but it will take considerably longer. Now you know how it works, let's look at the reasons behind Starlink's steady decline. As of July 2023, more than 4,200 tiny Starlink satellites have been sent into orbit. Even though this is a good number, it is nowhere near the projected number of satellites required to cover the whole Earth and meet the ever-increasing demand. Experts predict that at least 30,000 satellites would be required to fully cover the planet. With these limited number of satellites, the internet speed is getting affected. Starlink advertises a 100 Mbps minimum download speed, which is clearly not possible right now. Even if Starlink somehow doubled the current satellite number, the combined bandwidth from all of those satellites will probably still not be sufficient to sustain at least 5 million users at a 100 Mbps download speed. However, it is worth mentioning that in some parts of the US, Starlink does have a good speed with some places reaching upwards of 190 Mbps. Back in the day, each Starlink user terminal cost $3,000 to produce when SpaceX first made them available for purchase. At that time, the business charged $499 for each Starlink terminal. This implied that the company was accepting huge losses. A year or so later, the company reduced production costs to $1,500 per unit by early 2021. Then, in April 2021, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell announced that the business was able to further reduce the cost to $1,300 per unit and their ultimate objective is to bring down production costs to as little as a few hundred dollars per unit. While all of this is good in theory, it has not yet been turned into reality. Compared to most internet services around the world, Starlink is quite expensive. The user needs to pay $120 per month for the residential plan and $599 for the equipment upfront. In addition to the upfront costs, you also need to consider recurring price hikes. Since beginning the service, Starlink has raised its monthly fee quite a few times. This indicates that during the course of next year's prices are probably going to fluctuate frequently once more in the future. The Starlink is highly affected by extreme weather conditions. Current Starlink terminal models shut down thermally when the temperature rises too high to a value of 122 Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. 
and resume operations when the temperature falls below 120 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a big problem for those who live in hot climates and eventually make Starlink effectively ineffective for them. Not only this, the Starlink also has a difficulty with ice and snow as the general level of service you receive from your terminal may suffer from snow accumulation. Even though Starlink has a snow melting technology installed in it, the device still needs time to start operating properly. Apart from all this, Starlink is largely affected by its position and how many obstacles it faces. The Starlink terminals must be placed in a location with a completely clear sky above in order to avoid any potential hindrance. This can be particularly challenging if you are in a very populated area or densely forested location. Lastly, one of the most major problems that is largely impacting Starlink as a whole is the unavailability of customer service as customer service and communication are by far one of the most important aspects of any company. Unfortunately, Starlink doesn't offer any form of public communication channel for questions regarding sales, availability, technical specifications, etc. You cannot even contact them by phone, email or through their website. Even if you do purchase the service, all formal correspondence takes place via an online support ticket system. A lot of customers have expressed frustration with these tickets' lengthy response times. Many users have had to wait several weeks for Starlink to respond, even to a serious problem like a service outage, which in itself is completely outrageous. Even with all the problems, many experts believe that Starlink is too important to fail. This is evident from Elon Musk's statements as well in which he has stated that the scope of the Starlink program is not generally understood. Elon Musk intends to make enough money from this in order to support his plans to colonize Mars. However, if we just look at the condition of Starlink right now, it doesn't look good at all for the multi-million dollar company as it clearly needs a lot of work and revamped structure. Nevertheless, there is no denying that the Starlink represents an audacious project that has the potential to change the face of internet around the world in the coming years. That is it from today's video, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, show some love and hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on any of the amazing videos we have in store for you.